Yes, hello, you guys. How you guys doing today? Um, I would like to introduce to you guys the Reach for Open the Show, and I'm your host, Stephan Daniels. And I'm Devon Sherman. Oh, go ahead. Of course. All right, and today's topic is about homophobia in and out of the community. You know, this is a very deep topic because this can go all over. You know, this can go from homophobia with being fat, homophobia with being a femme, homophobia with being a top, homophobia with being a bottom, and so forth, versatile, and so on. And homophobia can actually stretch from your own community to your own family to your church groups. It can stretch such a far and vast array of places that, you know, it's pretty much everywhere. But I would like to also talk about, I don't know if you remember that, uh, that situation that happened in um, Oxford, California with Larry uh, King. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I think he was about 14 years old, and he was um, assassinated at his own high school. The young high school boy. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. at his middle school, my bad. Um, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact of him giving somebody that's quote-unquote straight a Valentine's Day card <laughs> that wasn't comfortable with his own sexuality. Quote-unquote. So, therefore, he was assassinated, which I think was crazy because of the simple fact that the teacher and other students uh, realized that he was looking at him, you know, constantly, you know, as the day went on, at approximately 8.15, he was gunned down. Who in the hell do you think you are to go kill anybody, you know, and especially over being gay? To me, that's just very, I don't know, that's oblivious, I, it's just crazy. So this was a case of homophobia actually in the school system. Now, kids on these on just their day-to-day, -day, they have to deal with this every day, going to school, walking to and from school. And there are teachers that will turn the other way because maybe they feel the same way. Maybe they're homophobic and things like that. Because you have to think about this. You being a teacher, you being a staff member, a school administrator, whatever, of the school, think about that being your child. Mm -hmm. Think about that being somebody, you know, in your family. You know, because people always want to say, oh, well, you know, that's not me, that's not me. But think about it. When you disrespect that person and you hurt that person, think about it. That could be your son, that could be your dad, that could be anybody. All this behavior, it streams from one place. How they were brought up exactly. and what's going on in their household. I can say for me, for example, you know, growing up in the household with, uh, you know, with a predominant a black family, you know, my mother telling me that, you know, being gay is not good, you know, being gay is crazy, you know, all they do is work in beauty shops, you know, um, all they do is do nails and makeup. Well, honey, I ain't gonna lie, I love to do makeup, okay? <laughs> honey, and as you can see, I'm dusted boots right now, okay? I'm gonna keep it 100% real, all right? So, Watch face it's face. just, right. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's really sad with parents sometimes because of their lack of, a lack of knowledge with, with gays, with, you know, t people, people that are transgender, lesbian, bisexual, questioning, you know, and then some. So, you think it's that strings from a lack of knowledge? I think so. Mm, okay. And the thing, too, that a lot of parents don't understand is they think that when you're gay, like, that's it, you can't do nothing. Um, as far as homophobia goes in the household, do take the time to actually get to know your child and know where your child is coming from and what he's going through which leads us to homophobia in the communities. Homophobia in the community actually, to me, in my opinion, starts within our own community. You know, because I, I think it's really sad that we're judgmental against each other. But he's absolutely right. Hom <laughs> it's funny because hmm. homosexuals cannot get along with other homosexuals. The black ones want to stay with the black ones, whites with the whites, Asians with the Asians, and you barely see interactions with, between those groups. And then even within those groups. You know, they're like, oh, well, I'm too masculine to hang out with him. I'm too masculine to hang out with her. Or I'm too feminine. I can't see myself being around that one. All right, or she's too fat. That's she, crazy. You know, when, it, when the end of the day comes around, y'all doing the same thing. Y'all all climbing in the bedroom and doing the same thing. It is crazy because you just can't get along, just can't talk. This kind of thing can break a person down. Just like if you can't even go to your own peers and talk about your own problems, then, I mean, who can you really go to? I mean, you already have going into the larger community. You have the straight man that's like, oh, manly, macho. You see a dude walking down the street and they want to fight you because you're supposed to be, they're supposed to be this big old buff man and to validate their masculinity, they want to fight a, a, a dude that you can see walking down the street switching, flipping and wearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this goes back to me being in high school. I, I'm not even gonna lie. I was, homoph I was homophobic against my own people. No. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real because I didn't know because when I'm, I'm, I'm just being real when I was in school I was at home with with my mom, you know grandma and all them so it was kind of like You know p People that were gay and that were feminine were just looked at as bad So me I would talk lots of dirt out. I, I was I don't even want to say some of the things I would say it, All I'm gonna say is it took me a long time to get to the level that I'm at so I can relate to 
to some of those people that are that are homophobic because I was one of them at one time. Were you in? Were you actually dating guys or you know engaging in sexual acts with these guys? Actually, you know what's funny because I didn't have my first sexual experience with a dude until I was about 18. I had girlfriends all through high school, all through middle school. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was always attracted to guys, and I knew I was. So that so that had a lot to do with the reason why I was always. Ooh, I don't like no gay people. I don't like no fan people. I don't, I don't, oh hell, no, you know. Mm -hmm. And little little did I know it, I was the biggest queen at the damn school. Then there was a part of me that wanted to join the Gay Straight Alliance and all that, but then there was other, also another part of me that said, oh no, everybody in here gay, and I don't want everybody knowing about, knowing about me, so everybody I can't do that. The gay straight alliance, but I'm for real, I just, you know. I'm going to say everybody gay is the Gay Straight Alliance. Well, I knew, You're bridging you know, the gaps. Well, I knew I couldn't fit on straight. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of... Yeah. <laughs> well, you were right in the middle. We was about to talk about our coming out process. Oh, oh, oh coming out. Ooh, Lord. Coming out. Coming out, have you ever been in? It's a question. Uh -huh. I don't know about all that, but I know I had a hard time coming out. <laughs> Did you? Let's talk about that. What happened to you? The first person that I came out to was my one You know, and I came out to her and I told her, I said, you know, I'm gay, you know, I've been feeling like I've been knowing since I was a little kid, you know, I'm really I'm scared to tell people, so please don't tell anybody. Because I'm not comfortable with myself. I really was not happy and like I didn't know what to do, so I turned to her. Well, she kind of backstabbed me and she went and told the rest of the family, so I kind of like really had no option but to just go ahead and tell them yes. In which that was really hard for me because I wasn't comfortable yet. So I, it, it, in a way, it kind of benefited me a little bit because it put me on the spot to really just learn to tell the truth and be honest. Um, well, as for me, I didn't really have a coming out process. What happened to me is uh, my mama walked in on me with uh, one of my friends and Ooh, stuff. I was fat. <laughs> was it good? No, actually, I was scared to death. I didn't know what was about to happen. But, you know, luckily for me, you know, my mother, she brought me to the side and told me, you know, this is your decision, this is your choice. You know, I may not agree with it, but, you know, you're my son and I'm going to love you regardless. So, you know, we actually, it strengthened our relationship, if anything. And now, you know, I take her shopping and stuff like that and make sure she looks fresh to death all the time. Homophobia even stretches within our own churches. Where you going to worship, you going to get the word of God, yet you're still worried about, ooh, she playing that tambourine a little too much, girl. I've had conversations with with pastors, reverends, all the, all, whatever you want to call them, about, you know, them putting people out of the church because of them being gay. And my, my thing, like he said, is, you know, sin is sin. What makes the sins that you do better than mine? Mm -hmm. You're a man just like me. You sin. You make mistakes. So how are you going to kick me out of a church? And on that note, go to a church that you feel comfortable in. Because not all churches are like that. I'm going to honestly say that. Not all churches are like that. And you go where you feel comfortable. People are going to talk. People are always going to talk. So... The best thing to do sometimes is just, hey, let God handle it. Because they believe me, because just like he's working on you, he's working on them. And on that people going to talk thing, everybody remember this. It's not when people are talking about you that you need to be worried. It's when they stop talking about you is when you need to really worry. Because that means that somebody out there, nobody out there cares. Like I said, love yourself. Know who you are. Don't think about what everybody else is thinking. Of, you know, just love yourself. For everybody that says homosexuality is a choice, why in the world would you want to choose being condemned. Why would you want to choose being turned about by your friends and family? Why would you want to choose this hardship? It's not a choice. It's something that, you know, we're born with. And on that note, homosexuality is in the animal kingdom. You see animals out there, homosexual. So, so are you telling me that they're going out and choosing this too because they have the mental capacity to do all of this stuff, right? Okay. Just, you know, want to put that out there. Do your research. Learn what you need to learn. If you want to know about it, please you guys, the doors of Reach LA are always open, www.reach.la. You know, come and talk to anybody in here, and we'll definitely give you more information. Exactly, because the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And the body is too, so don't be no swear. <laughs>